Welcome back, Innovation Nation. Today, we're going to talk about three things to consider when purchasing an e-bike. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you so much for stopping by to give us a watch. And if you guys would like to be updated when we put out new videos, please make sure to like and subscribe. Hit the little notification bell and we will be sure to let you know when we have new videos like this and other bike reviews coming up in the future. First and foremost, the number one thing I always look at is, is it in my budget? This is not a financial advice channel per se. But one of the things that we hopefully provide is the service of getting our hands on these different bikes and letting you know if it's worth the money. That being said, everybody's budget is different and everybody has different options. You'll see some people who say, hey, I've got to have this $5,000 e-bike for sure. And you got other people who says, well, I've got $600, $700 to spend on an e-bike. You know, what can I get? So the first question you need to figure out is what is your budget for an e-bike? But once you've got your budget figured out, then you can look at the available bikes in that price range. Next, we're going to look at the company. With so many of the e-bikes today going straight to consumer, it's important that those companies provide excellent customer support. Despite what you may or may not think, an e-bike is a fairly complicated product with a lot of moving parts and a lot of little things that could go wrong. Now, when you buy a bike through a bike shop, now you've got a local contact, somebody who can work on that bike, somebody who knows that brand, somebody to offer you advice in different situations. But if you're receiving your bike straight from the manufacturer, that manufacturer needs to have all of the things in place to provide excellent customer service. Things that would include a hotline, someplace that you can call, a reasonable response time to emails and a company that has a dedicated staff that are there to help their customers. So that's the next thing you need to look for. Like, after you buy this bike, are you going to get the support that you need to make sure that your experience is good and continues to be good? And last but not least is don't overthink it. We've all heard of the phrase paralysis by analysis, and when it comes to e-bikes, this is a space where that is so, so true. There are so many bikes that look similar, I mean, are similar, And this one has this LCD screen. This one has the other LCD screen. Which one should I get? This one has bottle cage bosses. This one does not have bottle cage bosses. Which one should I get? So at the end of your research phase, you may have 30, 40 bikes that all fit those first two parameters that we set out there. And now how do you pick? Now, from my perspective, it comes down to needs versus wants. And basically what that means as far as it relates to the e-bike space, is what is this bike going to be used for? What is the purpose of this bike? What needs does it fill in your life? And what are you looking to get out of it? So you figured out the budget. This is sort of similar to your life budget. You're going to sit down and you say, what do I need this bike to do? What do I need to get out of this bike? So you'll have your list of, you know, just a few things. It's kind of up to you how many, you know, boxes you need this bike to tick. But let's say you've got four, five, six things and you have a bike that hits all of those and it meets those first two parameters, it's in your budget, it comes from a solid company with excellent customer service, then that's the bike that will work for you, right? Because you you looked at your life, you said, hey, this is what I need, and that bike fills that for you. So when you have more options and you're weighing all those against each other, it can lead to higher levels of anxiety, it can lead to buyer's remorse, it can lead to just an overall unsatisfaction from the experience. Now what's interesting is if you could look at it from two perspectives, like, hey, I spent the time, I found the perfect bike in every single box. Like I made 122 box, it ticks all 122 boxes and you buy that bike over all of the other ones and you've spent, you know, a few months deliberating on that choice. You're less likely to be satisfied with it compared to if you would have picked a bike that only ticks 80 of those 122 boxes that you made. So at the end of the day, it really does come down to what you need and having those needs met, and that's where you're going to find true satisfaction. So when it comes to e-bikes, a space that is so full of choices, I think that it's super important to figure out what you need, find a bike that meets those first two parameters we talked about, then meets up with that list that you have, and get that bike. All right, guys, that's going to do it for my top three things to keep in mind when you are purchasing a new e-bike. If you guys found this video helpful and think I should do some more of them, let me know. This is the first one I've done that's kind of like, you know, just me talking about some things that I see in this space as opposed to just reviewing bikes. But if it brings some value to you guys, I mean, I had fun doing it, so let me know. Have fun out there, and we will catch you on the next one.